Hi, hey, thank you. My name is Sibis. Can you please help me with this question? This it says, prove the following identity. We've got this whole mesh of ideas on the left hand side, and we've got a fairly simple expression on the right hand side. So usually with your identities, teachers will draw start with the more complicated side, and that makes perfect sense on this side. So let's just delve right into this. Firstly, because we have a co-ratio that's going to happen here. I'm going to write this square out so that you guys can understand where it comes from. So firstly, you say that the left-hand side is equal to. This numerator is basically the same as saying cos of 90 degrees plus theta multiplied by itself. Okay, easy, simple enough, but we will get there. Now, cos of negative theta, remember in your cos diagram, negative theta will sit here. And remember, cos diagram means C A S T. Cos is still positive in this fourth quadrant, which means that cos of negative theta is the same as basically just saying cos of theta. Okay, so now we have a plus. Sine of 90 degrees minus theta. Sine and cos of their 90 degrees minus means that you immediately do the co-ratio. So it's cos of theta, okay. And that is multiplied by another cos of theta. So now we keep on going. We're working only with the left-hand side. We're trying to make it look like the right-hand side. So cos of 90 degrees plus theta. Now that's a tricky one. 90 degrees minus the sine stays the same, but plus is negative sine theta and that's the first term but remember we have a second one which is the same. Now some of you guys would immediately have seen that we have cos squared of 90 plus theta which means that you have negative sine theta squared and you immediately go to that and that's fine but I'm going through this slowly in case you don't immediately see that. In our denominator cos of theta stays the same because we can't add it to anything right now and we get cos squared of theta. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit closer to the right hand side. Numerator multiplies out to give us just sine squared of theta and we get the same denominator that we've been working with. Okay, so now if we look at the right hand side that we're trying to make this look like, there are absolutely no signs as in sine ratios in this right hand side. So we need to try and get our entire left hand side expressed in terms of cos. So how do we do that? Well in this numerator, remember, sine squared of theta is the same as saying 1 minus cos squared of theta because sine squared theta plus cos squared of theta equals 1. Fundamental identity. So if we manipulate that, we get this for sine squared of theta. And now if I look at this denominator, we're trying to get just cos of theta in the denominator. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to take out a cos theta as a common factor. And I get 1 plus another cos of theta. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer and these numerator and denominator little brackets kind of almost look the same. How do we get them to look the same? Well, if you guys can see this is basically the difference of two squares. If we said that this is x squared, because one is a square number, minus y squared, remember we can rewrite it as x minus y multiplied by x plus y. So if we rewrite this numerator in terms of these two brackets, we're going to get one minus cos of theta, because you square root this, multiplied by one plus cos theta. Okay, and our denominator stays the same. Now we have two different binomials in our numerator and denominator. There are no pluses in between these two multiplications, so we can now divide into each other. So 1 plus cos of theta, this whole expression, will divide into itself to give us 1. So if we carry on simplifying, we're going to get 1 minus cos of theta all over cos of theta. 
Now, remember our right-hand side is supposed to look like 1 over cos of theta minus 1. So we're getting there. We are getting there. Now another thing, your fundamental understanding of fractions, remember, in would, would even be primary school. If you have x plus y over 3, it's exactly the same as saying x over 3 plus y over 3, common denominator. So if I apply that logic to this fraction over here, this is the same as saying 1 over cos of theta minus cos theta over cos theta. And now we are getting exactly to where we need to be on the right hand side. If we simplify, 1 over cos theta remains the same and anything divided by itself is 1. And that is exactly what we needed to find right at the beginning here. Okay, so guys, when you are confronted with a trigonometric identity like this, start with the more complicated side. I do advocate that idea, but sometimes you need to like manipulate the right hand side to look like you need to sometimes work with both of them. But if you have something like this situation where the left hand side is like just a mess and the right hand side is two little tiny expressions, start with the left hand side. Also remember, co-ratios are very important. If you have a 90 degrees minus Co-ratio, immediately, cos and sine. Also, if you have a sine squared or a cos squared, try and remember that that added to its co-ratio squared is one. Also a great manipulation technique. Try to just work towards what you're trying to find. If it's in terms of just cos, get everything in terms of just cos. If you have a sine, try to manipulate it to be a cos. Okay, so trig identities can be tricky sometimes, but just remember co-ratios, reduction formulae, remember your cast diagram, very important, where the ratios are positive and negative, and you'll be fine with your trig identities. So Legwe, hopefully I helped you out with your question.